On the agenda tonight, we're going back to the 1950s. We're going to be taking a look at the Lennon sisters and they're going to be performing Swinging on a Star. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this particular video I hadn't seen before. I hadn't seen the Lennon sisters or heard the song. So it was interesting to take a look at this one. It's about two and a half minutes in length. We'll listen to it the whole way through and then jump into the analysis after. But let's see how the ladies get on. Singing stars or very, very wonderful girls, Diane, Peggy, Kathy, and Janet Lennon, singing Swinging on a Star. <laughs> And there we have it. So, I mean, this is such a unique performance in so many ways because of the fact that they're sisters and they blend their voices so well, which we will jump into, but just the song. Just to talk about this song for a second, because I hadn't heard it before, I wondered where it came from, and it came from a movie back in 1944 called Going My Way, and that had Bing Crosby in it, and that song actually won an Academy Award uh, that same year for Best Original Song. But anyway, Bing Crosby, because he was in the movie, uh, Jimmy Van Hoosen, who, who was the songwriter, he went round to Bing's house, and Bing's son, Gary, was complaining about going to school the next day, and Bing said to Gary, if you don't go to school, you may grow up to become a mule. And this is something that Jimmy found entertaining and was thinking about songs that he was going to write for this movie and decided that that would be the theme or the topic to write a song about. And when he spoke to his friend and lyricist Johnny Burke, Johnny agreed and they decided to put this song together for the movie. But getting into the analysis of the vocals, because I have isolated them, run them through the pitch monitoring software, I didn't want it to obliterate the screen when we watched it the first time through. But now when we get into it and just hearing the accuracy of the vocals here, because they're sisters and this tends to happen with families that sing. 
they have this ability to blend their voices so well, but it goes beyond the level of blending that you might have between a lead singer and then a backing vocalist who hasn't sung with that singer a lot. To get a really good blending of voices live and on records, you match your voices dynamically. And this is something that happens all the time with great singers and great backing vocalists. They learn to do this. But when you're talking about this level, and it's, it's a totally different level of vocal blending, not only do we get that match dynamically between the voices, i.e. when the words are being sung a little bit louder, everyone sings them louder. When they're softer, everyone sings them more softly. So you get this dynamic change all the time and it's just consistent throughout every vocalist. They're all doing exactly the same thing with their voices, delivering the, exactly the same volume each. So you get a nice blend that way. The deeper level that we get into here is blending with stylizations, which is blending slides. So everyone slides through their notes from where they are to their destination at the same rate, at the same speed. And they all get to that de destination at exactly the same time. And once they're at their note, they then hold the note and vibrato at the same frequency, the same rate of vibrato. And this is why I think being in a family, it just tends to click a little bit more. And sometimes this isn't the case. Sometimes singers in the same family have different vibratos because it is such a unique thing. It's a unique part of your expression. And sometimes people can't even control their vibrato. It just is what it is. But in this case, we've got every single member following that same frequency. And when they hold on vibrato, they then finish their vocal phrases at exactly the same time. So you never hear one of the voices continue just for a little bit longer and then finish. So we're talking about vocal tightness here, but just this blending of everything. Every single voice here has the same expression in it. Even though they're singing different notes, they're all sliding the same way and applying vibrato exactly the same way. Have a listen to these isolated vocals and listen out for how Every voice is exactly the same and how they're ending at precisely the same point. Would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar. And listen out for moonbeams that slide. Like I said, their rate of sliding is identical, which is obviously going to give you the, the best possible blend that you could hope to hear. And what's so clever about it is that the intervals between notes here aren't the same. So what I mean by that is one of them might be singing a note and part of their harmony line, they might be going down five semitones to their next note and sliding down. Another one of them will be singing their first note, but then only having to come down two semitones for their harmony line. So it means that they've got less distance to cover, but the slides match up. So it means that the slide we've got coming down five semitones is the same speed and reaches the destination at the same point as the two semitone slide. So this is it. This is, I mean, it's such detail to look at this kind of thing in, but this is how the final result is achieved. The semitone, the two semitone slide is slow the five semitone slide is faster so that they both match and they both arrive at exactly the same time at their independent notes. So, I mean, when you think about it, it is just on a totally different level. It's so impressive. But when you listen out for it, obviously it just sounds seamless. And be better off than you are. Or would you rather be a mule? And that there's so much in there when we're looking at the mule, the mule, we've got this slide up to the F4 uh, from the C4, 
But the control, I mean, just looking at the accuracy as well of that F4, this is another point that they are so good independently at hitting pitches, singing notes from chords as they progress. But yeah, it's such a nice, smooth, easy to listen to sound that they've got tonally. It's not too bright, it is soft. A mule is an animal with long and funny ears. He kicks up at anything he hears. And that's really interesting because when we go into our lead vocal and each of the sisters has a lead vocal here, you can hear the difference in the delivery and how clear these words are. And there's probably less of a blending approach because it is that lead vocal. If they all sang this way independently, it would be too harsh because we're getting a stronger sound on the consonants of the words. So when you're blending, you're not really emphasizing the letters as much because you want those letters to be smoother and for the voices to blend. So when you're singing, for example, you know, you, it's gonna be high. You might grow up to be a mule, like that. Rather than going, you might grow up to be a mule and being overly like that, you'll have, you might grow up to be a mule, that kind of thing. And you see how that, you might grow up to be a mule. You're blending now. It, it kind of blends in to, rather than to be a mule and really hard with those consonants. That's what I mean, obviously. I don't know why I'm singing it uh, where they're singing it because I'm a guy. But just to give you that example of the difference between more of a lead vocal where you're going for the clarity of a single voice. His back is brawny and his brain is weak. He's just plain stupid with a stubborn streak. And by the way, if you hate to go to school. Uh, just listen to the clarity of going from the blended voices into now the lead vocal. With a stubborn streak. And by the way. So it, it's, it's, it's night and day. Mm, by the way, it's now really talking and singing at the same time but so different to that blend. And if anything, you get an appreciation of the blend even more because the lead vocal, the solo, is now louder. It sounds louder than the blends. So you can hear the dynamic change, how they're taking volume out of their voices to blend them all at the same level. And then when there's a sister who has a lead vocal, they all just lift it a little bit and pronounce the words a little bit more clearly. So yeah, that enunciation, but let's listen on. If you hate to go to school, you may grow up to be a mule. Or would you like to swing on a star, carry moonbeams home in a jar? Again, that carry moonbeams home in a jar. It's so smooth, it's not, Moonbeams, whole minute. You know, it's not like that. So, I mean, it's great because we've got the isolated vocals here. So we can listen to it in this kind of detail to kind of get our heads around how this sounds so good. <laughs> Obviously, you need a hell of a lot of talent. <laughs> but now just listening to it, you can hear where they're ending their phrases, how they're sliding. And listen out for the vibrato as well. They're matching perfectly. Let me take it back and listen to it in slow motion. <laughs> there we go. The, uh, they're all hitting that frequency perfectly. Or would you rather be a pig? A pig is an animal with dirt on his face. His shoes are a terrible disgrace. I must say that when I first heard this, I was thinking of a pig <laughs> because, you know, she says it's an animal and she said his shoes are a disgrace. And I, I don't know why I imagined a pig wearing shoes. Uh, but anyway, obviously, they're probably referring to uh, the male of the species here. Uh, I'm talking a human male. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just a funny image that popped up in my head. He's got no manners when he eats his food. 
be fat and lazy and extremely rude, but if you don't care a feather or a fig. I mean, again, looking at the accuracy here of the G4, just spot on, even with this conversational or sto storytelling really is, is what it is, the delivery. It's basically doing two things at once, which is another art in itself, being able to tell a story and hit pitches this accuracy with this accuracy, but keeping that quality to it, that it's not really overly like singing. That There's no vibrato in the phrases. So I'll just play that again. Extremely rude, but if you don't. Extremely rude, but if you don't. You know, it's not extremely rude, but it, you know, there's no vibrato within phrases. There's storytelling and then vibrato at the end for held notes. Don't care a feather or a fig. You may go up to be a pig. I mean, pig is one of the w fig and pig. Uh, because it's got a G at the end, it means that you don't really get to hold <laughs> that word anyway. You can't go pig g -g 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 and <laughs> apply vibrato. So again, it's just another thing about particular words that end with particular consonants. And especially ending, of course, in a vowel, it means that you go na, e, u. It means you can hold a note or hold a word that ends like that a lot more easily. But let's, let's not get into too much detail, but let's get back into it. Star, good example. Star, ah, it's an R. Jar. And be better off than you are. And I mean, it's a good example. I haven't mentioned this in any video before about ending with vowels allowing you to hold that note and not giving you an end to the line. And this is why, you know, lyrics are so important. But let's get back into it. Or would you rather be a fish? A fish who won't do anything but swim in a brook. He can't write his name or read a book. To fool up people is his only thought. And though he's slippery, he still gets caught. But then if that sort of life is what you wish. You may grow up to be a fish. And all the most And now we're on the oo vowel. So we had zoo. And of course, being a vowel means that you can hold it for longer. So you see, it's all up to you. When I say hold it for longer, you can hold it as long as your breath can uh, make a sound with your vocal cords. This is why that vibrato, I mean, it's so even, it just floats out there. You can be better than you are. Great example there of the slides because now we're not following tempo. We haven't got that strict instrumental approach going on. We've got this gradual change in tempo that isn't going to be something that you're, you know, clicking your fingers to. It's a feel. And they're just feeling their way through this, but matching all of these slides perfectly. You could be swinging on a star. <laughs> they even end with a nod in perfect, I was going to say harmony, but probably um, unity. That They nod in unison <laughs> right at the end. Being born with the same genetics, they'll have very similar sounding voices, but it's all of these other things that you have to add in in order to have that appreciation of blending because it doesn't matter if your voices sound the same tonally. If one of them's being really you know, abrupt with their pronunciation and enunciation and one of them's being really soft, it's going to clash. And if one of them's doing really fast vibrato, another one's doing slow vibrato, again, it's going to clash. So there's so many levels to this that just make it great to listen to, but great to analyze as well. Just for reference, so we know who is who, we have Diane, who's in the middle at the back. We have Janet, who's the youngest at the front. We have Peggy on the right-hand side and Kathy on the left-hand side. Just to let you know as well that the Lennon sisters are still going strong. Mimi has replaced Peggy 
who retired and uh, Diane, also known as Dee Dee, retired. So we have Janet, Kathy and Mimi who are yeah, still going strong as the Lennon sisters. Anyway, thank you guys for suggesting this video for me to take a look at. As always, let me know what you guys think and keep the suggestions and requests coming in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock!